If you're in the mood for a simple little puzzle that's fun and relaxing and won't completely burn out your brain, you might turn to the common everyday word search, which you can find in about 3 million different magazines on your local newsstand. This one comes from my friends at Penny Press. If you've recently arrived from the planet Jupiter and have never seen a word search before, well, it's easy enough to understand. You're given a list of words and a grid of letters. You have to find each word somewhere in the grid, reading in a straight line, forward, backward, up, down, or diagonally. After you've solved enough word searches, however, you might become interested in a larger puzzle challenge, making a word search. If you've never made a puzzle before, a word search is a great place to start, and there's the added benefit that you can hide a secret message in your puzzle and give it to a friend to discover. The first thing you need to do when you sit down to make a word search is to decide what the topic of your puzzle is going to be. Sure, you can hide a bunch of completely random words in your word search grid, but it's much more elegant if all the words belong to the same category. Sports teams, or things found in a classroom, or names of breakfast cereals, or characters from Harry Potter, or countries of the world, or kinds of trees, or musical instruments, or, well, just about anything, really. So what should the topic of our word search be? How about birds? That means we're going to need a whole bunch of different bird names. Some of them will get used in the puzzle and some of them won't make the cut, but we need a nice long list to refer to. So let's jump over to Wikipedia and see what they've got. And they have a list of birds by common name. That's perfect. Scroll down the list and you see birds both familiar and weird. Tinamu? Never heard of it, so I'm not putting it on my list. I want all the words in my puzzle to be very well known. Ostrich, kiwi, now we're talking. On to the list they go. What about the emu? That's a well-known bird, but it only has three letters, and I don't like having three-letter words in my puzzle, so I'm going to skip it. Duck, goose, teal isn't bad, swan. Let's see, scoter. What's a scoter? Never heard of that, so it's not going into my puzzle. Chachalaka. That's a great word that I'm glad I now know, but it too will not be appearing in my word search. Partridge, quail, grouse, turkey. We're going to have a lot of birds in our list before we're done. Okay, now we have a whole lot of birds, and now it's time to get them organized. I like to use a spreadsheet program like Excel or Google Sheets, and I simply type one bird into each row and make a nice long list for myself. But then I like to go a step further. Both Excel and Google Sheets has a nice little command that will let you sort your list of birds, not alphabetically, but by length, with the long birds at the top and the short birds at the bottom. And now we're finally ready to start making our puzzle. First thing that you need is a blank grid. Uh, we're going to use a 10 by 10 grid here. It's not too big, it's not too small, it's just right for our first puzzle. And we'll start by putting a nice long word into our grid. Cardinal, down here on the diagonal. Words can read in any direction, remember. Up, down, left, right, forward, backward, diagonally, but always in a straight line. And here's the important rule. Each new word we add to our grid has to cross a word that's already there. We can't just start a new island of words somewhere else. Every word in the puzzle has to cross at least one other word. So let's put penguin into the grid. Reading up, crossing on the N of cardinal. Now what? Well, we can put Falcon here, crossing both of the previous entries. That's pretty nice. And we could put Robin right underneath it, crossing both Cardinal and Penguin. Good. That gives us a double O here. Any birds with a double O? Yes, we have Loon, so into the grid it goes. Let's get another nice long word in here, uh, albatross.
now we have a lot that we can build on. Uh, we can put Sparrow here. And then we can put Pigeon backwards here. Crossing on the G, we can then put Magpie reading diagonally up. A lot of newbie word search constructors forget about diagonals. All the words in their puzzles are either horizontal or vertical, so make a point of getting some diagonal words in there. I'm starting to think this grid doesn't need to be this big. We haven't used the first column at all yet. If I was doing this on graph paper, I would shade it out now. Uh, but since I'm doing this on the computer screen, I'm just going to get rid of it entirely. We have room for Heron down here. And let's see, we need something for this bottom row. Uh, a bird ending in S? Or no, Ostrich is perfect, reading backwards. We'll fill in this small space with turn, and that allows us to place condor here. Things are getting tight in the center here, but we still have room for swan. And we can place swift reading up here. We've got a couple of wide open spaces that we need to fill in. Up here, a bird with an N towards the middle. How about canary? And over here, do we have a bird that can cross heron on the N? Six letters? Yes, we have toucan. And that'll about do it. No, 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 we can squeeze crow in right here. And now we're done. 18 birds in a 9 by 10 grid. Not too bad. Now we have to do something about these remaining empty spaces. Uh, we could just fill some random letters in there, but that's no fun. Instead, we're going to use these empty spaces for the secret message that I told you about earlier. When the solver is done, the solver will take these empty spaces and get a final message. And that message should probably have something to do with birds, since our whole puzzle is about birds. So we have 10 empty spaces, so we need a 10-letter message. Um, something about birds, nests, flying, feathers. Oh, I know. No puzzle maker can resist a terrible pun. So when our solver is done with the puzzle, we're going to declare the solver to be excellent. E-G-G-S-E-L-L-E-N-T. Ten letters. So we spell that out row by row. The E here, and the two G's here, and so on until all the spaces are filled. And boom, here is our completed word search. Now you have to format it, and you can do that in Excel or in a Google spreadsheet. Uh, you can even do it in a word processor. But if you do it in a word processor, you're going to want to use something that's called a monospaced font, so that every single letter is the same size as every other letter. Lucida Console is a good monospaced font. You can download the puzzle that we made from the link underneath the video. Come back next time to learn about different kinds of puzzles and wordplay.